This question relates to ACCA's FA2 syllabus area G. It tells us in the question that at the 31st of August 20x7, David Grant owed his suppliers $22,862. During the year ended 31st of August 20x8, his payments to suppliers totaled $158,211. And then at the 31st of August, he owed his suppliers $19,061. What's the value of David's credit purchases for the year to the 31st of August 20x8? I'm going to show my answer using the T account. Because all of this relates to trade payables, I'm going to slot in the numbers I know, and the missing number must be what the purchases are going to be for the year. So, for example, what they've told us, we know at the beginning of the year, so at the 31st of August 20x7, so last year's balance and therefore this year's opening balance, David Grant owed his suppliers 22862 This would be on the credit side. So, brought forward, I'm going to put in 22862 then tell us that the payments to suppliers had totaled $158,211. So if we're making payments to suppliers, we're going to credit our bank to reduce that bank account and we're going to debit our trade payables with that amount. So I would put in on the debit side the $158,211. Finally, the other number that we've been told is the closing balance, the amount we owe the suppliers at the end of the year, 31st of August 20x8. They tell us that they owed their suppliers 19061 This would be shown as a balance carried down and then brought down figure on the left hand side. So I'm going to show my carry forward on the debit side. So 19061 because then that would be brought down onto the opposite side afterwards. So now I can close my T account. So I can work out my biggest side, which is the left-hand side. So totaling up the payments and the closing amounts owed to suppliers, which gives us $177,272. The other side needs to equal the same. So 177,272 here. And then the missing figure must be my purchases. The transaction for purchases would be to debit purchases and credit trade payables. And so the balancing figure to make sure that the credit side adds up to that total is 154,410. You could also do your workings as a list. So starting off with the amounts that are owed at the end of the year, which was the 19,061. Then I can add on any payments made to suppliers which is 158,211. And then taking off the amounts that were owed at the beginning of the year would also give me the purchases figure of 154,410. In this question for syllabus area G, we looked at markup and margin. It's given us some information at the beginning, telling us that the year ended 31st of October 20x2. We've got Sarah's sales being $233,669 and her cost of sales are $186,935. With that information, we're then asked to calculate what her gross profit markup and margin are. Before we do that, we can do a quick calculation because we know our sales figure and we also know our cost of sales figure as they have been given to us and we also know that if we take our sales and deduct our cost of sales we'll be left with our gross profit of $46,734. Now we have our gross profit it makes it easier for us to calculate our markup and margin percentages. When calculating markup what we're looking at is how much extra on top of cost of sales was added to get to our sales figures. So we're looking at this as an expression as a percentage of cost of sales. So if we take our gross profit and divide by cost of sales, multiplying by 100, that will give us our markup in percentage terms. So here we have our 46,734 divided by 186,935, which will give us a markup of 25%. 
margin, we're looking at the relationship between the sales figure and gross profit. So here we will take our gross profit and this time divide by sales multiplied by 100. So this time 46,734 divided by 233,669 and that will give us a margin figure of 20%, giving us the two answers that we need for this question. The last question looked at classifying balances between the statement of financial position and the statement of profit and loss. The choices that have been given are the depreciation charge, capital, cost of sales and provisions. So what this is really testing is your knowledge between income, expenses, assets and liabilities. Remember that all income and expenses go in your statement of profit and loss. And then all assets and liabilities are recorded in your statement of financial position. So looking at each one separately, first of all, depreciation charge. It's an expense. It's a charge for the year going against our profit figure. And therefore, it belongs in the statement of profit and loss. Capital are amounts that are owed to the owner. They are what has been invested, which would be paid back. And so therefore treated like a liability. So it should be shown in the statement of financial position. Cost of sales are the direct costs associated with making a sale for that business. And as a result, they are a group of expenses, in which case they need to be shown in the statement of profit and loss. Lastly, looking at provisions, these are amounts, measurements that the business would pay to settle an obligation. They are a liability of uncertain timing or amount. And so classified as a liability, they will again go into the statement of financial position. So four individual balances that you would find in a set of financial statements and classified into their correct statements.